what's up everyone welcome back to the channel today's video i'm going to be trying to help you decide what to level i know there's only five days left until uh warzone 2 launches and dmz launches but um i still that's still some time for you to level some guns so i went through and kind of tried to predict a little bit of what the meta is going to look like in warzone 2 before it even launches um and that's what this video is going to be all about i'm going to go through the different weapons and tell you which ones you should probably level um before we go into that i want to show you guys this new Modern Warfare 2 tuning share tool that we built on uh, TGD. So this is on the website. You can go here and basically the whole idea of this is I was getting tired of seeing people share literally six screenshots with people to show all the tunings for their weapons and just it's basically just a tool to share your builds with people. So there's no stats or anything on this page yet, but you can select all your attachments. Um, everything should be in the game or should be on uh, the website here. There's no stats, like I said, but um, you can select all these out and it puts the sliders for each attachment on here as well as the image for the weapon. You can tune these um, to just approximate positions that you'd put them in game. And then the idea is that you just screenshot this and post it on Twitter or send it to your friend or whatever. This is just um, on the homepage of TGD. So if you want to use that, it should make sharing these uh, full weapon builds with tunings a lot easier. I'm just going to go over the long range weapons and close range weapons. I'm not going to talk about um, snipers in this video or sniper supports. Um, just because it would make the video too long, but basically I went through and compiled all the stats for this. So hopefully moving forward, we're going to be working with Simthic to get our weapon stats directly from the files themselves. So all the numbers should be perfect. Um, basically just waiting on them to finish getting the attachments, but we have the base data up for all of this, um, courtesy of, of Simthic. So, uh, going through this, these numbers should be correct. Uh, basically I measured the accuracy. So this is going to be the long range, uh, weapons that I think should be leveled. Um, how I did accuracy was this is just a base weapon. So usually in the past, whenever you built a weapon out for Warzone, um, I don't know if this is still true. There's a lot of guesswork in this because the new game is not out yet. Warzone 2 is not out. Um, but when you would build a weapon, um, you could pretty much always get approximately the same reduction in recoil and approximately the same increase in bullet velocity between weapons. So um, attachments really weren't that important to determine which guns were going to be the meta. Um, just from a baseline point of view. So it's not a big deal that I didn't use attachments for this because if it works like previous games, we'll be able to basically tune all these roughly the same percentage. So if, if this gun was the most accurate for me without attachments, it's most likely going to be the most accurate for me with attachments as well. So I went in and I tested the recoil, no attachments for all of these different guns. This is stuff I've done in the past where I'll just aim at a target that's far away and basically go through and, and fire multiple mags of each weapon and kind of try to rank them. I'll have, um, different weapons as my secondary to compare to so I can get a good feel for basically how accurate I'd be with any one of these weapons So that's what the accuracy column is here um, And then we have the TTK at 200 health long range. So this is like 80 meter TTK uh, And then the TTK at 250 health. So in Warzone 2 if you haven't watched my video Warzone 2.0 The base health that you start with is 100 health with two plates and then if you pick up a satchel you get three plates So that puts it at 250 um, Satchels are very common. So I think it's important to look at both but uh, I, we don't really know like what percentage of people are going to be 200 health and what are going to be uh, 250 health yet, just because we haven't seen how many satchels there are. Um, but they look pretty prevalent, so I think it's important to look at both. Obviously, ADS time, mobility. We don't have any mobility mobility numbers yet. Um, I'm going to go in and test this myself pretty soon, probably. Um, but yeah, this is just an estimate based on whether or not it's an LMG, and kind of some of them are kind of like half LMGs, so. Uh, it's just a little bit of an estimate on the mobility and it's obvious with LMGs how much slower they are. So just kind of including a rough estimate there. And then reload time, again, LMG property. Um, you can see that these LMGs have just terrible reload times. Um, but yeah, that's what all the columns mean. So we don't know for sure yet if the damage profiles from Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer are going to carry over into Warzone 2. I've heard that a lot of them will. Um, but we will see if that ends up being the case actually when Warzone 2 launches. So TTK columns are going to be a little bit uh, less reliable than looking at something like accuracy and ADS time and mobility and reload. So don't put too much weight in these TTK values. They could change. I think they're going to be approximately the same, um, but they could change a little bit. So looking at this right off the bat, accuracy, the Lockman 556, TAC 56, and EBR 14, uh, and STB 556 were all the top in terms of accuracy, and that tends to be absolutely key for long range weapons uh it's usually the most important thing even more important than time to kill that's why we always see the kilo meta the stg meta um just these really low recoil weapons always end up being the long range meta and that will be the case again in warzone 2 i'm sure 
um, and these numbers won't change. So most likely these are my own tested accuracy values, just an approximation for my own accuracy with the weapons. That really won't change. It doesn't, they're not gonna tweak that, I don't think, for Warzone 2. So um, it's fair to look at that. And then looking at these numbers, so the Lockman 556, I've kind of I've kind of put a box around the weapons that I think you should be leveling. Um, Lockman 556, TAC 56, and EBR 14 stand out to me just because of that accuracy. Um, they don't have good time to kill compared to some of the heavy LMGs, but they do have good ADS time and good reload times. EBR is semi-auto, so it's um, it's a little tougher to hit your shots, but it shoots pretty slow and it has really good recentering, even compared to the other um, semi-auto guns. So I can see the EBR actually being, being pretty competitive in this. Um, but yeah, accuracy is king, so Lockman 556 and TAC 56 both are looking pretty good. Uh, the reason I didn't highlight the STB 56 or 556 is just because even though it has good accuracy, the Lockman and the TAC 56 are both a little bit more accurate for me. And then the time to kill numbers are generally a little bit better on those two as well. And everything else is kind of the same. So I just kind of feel like these two are going to play out a little bit better. Uh, we've also got some different LMG options. So the RAL pretty much has the best time to kill numbers, like just crazy fast time to kill. 540 milliseconds out at like 80 meters is, is nuts. Um, but it has terrible ADS, terrible mobility, and terrible reload time. So it's also pretty accurate. So this is going to be one of those guns that um, will just melt people. You will, won't be able to move around the map at all, but you will just immediately melt people if you if you use it. Um, I personally don't think I'm going to use it just because it's such a slow LMG. Like it's, it is the slowest of the slow, the heaviest of the heavy. So that's going to be just not very fun to use, I don't think. Um, but the one I do think looks pretty good is the RPK. So the RPK is similar in accuracy to the RAL has extremely good time to kill, like 250 milliseconds faster than, 200 to 300 milliseconds faster time to kill than um, the Lockman 556 and TAC 56, but it's still pretty accurate, and it's the lightest of the LMGs, or close to it, so it has still LMG numbers, but the reload time is only 5 seconds instead of like 8 seconds, like most of the LMGs. The ADS time is down about 100 milliseconds from some of the other options, so I think the RPK stands out a little bit as well. And then the Castoff 762 is a less accurate AR, so... Um, it's basically the RPK with a slightly different recoil pattern, has the exact same time to kill because it has the same damage profile, um, but it has AR ADS time and AR reload time, um, but it does have a little bit more recoil than the RPK, so I think that one stands out as well. Before I get into these close range options, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the videos that I make. Usually about 40% of people that are watching are not subscribed, um, and drop a like on the video for me, and also a comment about what you think are going to be the best long range weapons, close range weapons for... Uh, Warzone 2.0. It's only five days until it comes out, um, but I think we have a decent idea of what's looking like it's going to be pretty competitive. On to the close range weapons. I did a similar thing here, except accuracy is not nearly as important in SMGs because you're generally fighting within about 20 meters. Um, there's really no surprises here, I don't think, but um, basically compiled RPM, range, ADS, print to fire, tax print to fire, and mag size. Um, and we're just really focusing on time to kill. I think the three that stand out no question, are the Lockman Sub, which is the MP5, the Fennec, and the Vazna of 9K. Um, the one that stands out the most to me is the Fennec, because it has the most range, so 12.2 meters of range for the first drop-off. Um, super fast RPM, which means that it's going to be very forgiving when you miss your shots, because if you get back on target, you're immediately doing damage to that target again. Um, it runs out of ammo really quickly, though, because of that, so that's the downside. Um, but it also has really good time to kill at 250 and 200. Um, so I think the Fennec is the one that stands out the most to me of all of these, but the Lockman and the Vaznev are both fantastic as well. Um, Vaznev is basically a Lockman with slightly more um, damage range, like an extra meter of damage range, and it's just 10 milliseconds slower time to kill. So I think all three of these are worth leveling and having ready. Um, they're all going to be really good in, uh, in Warzone 2. All right, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one.